Picture this, it's June of 1998, and you're heading to the local retail store to pick up a copy of the latest, hot new version of Windows that Microsoft had released, Windows 98. You were using Windows 95 at the time, and heard that 98 would bring improvements to the system. After buying it and installing it on your computer at Compact Presario from the time, the experience was a tad bit better. And after more than two and a half decades later looking at it, I still think that it's quite a fine experience if I say so myself. Windows 98 was one of the first consumer releases of Windows. At the time, Microsoft was in a bit of hot water with the US federal government, but that's a different story which deserves a dedicated video. Anyways, Windows 98 began life as Microsoft codename Memphis in late 1996 or early 1997. Prior to Memphis, a previous project known as Nashville existed and it was cancelled. Had that been released, it would have ended up being released as Windows 96. The first official build of Memphis, developer release build 1353, was released in early January 1997, though the earliest known build that you can actually get your hands on was shared a few days before on the 30th of December 1996. That one is build 1351. A so-called build 1050 is mentioned in the string of a Windows 95 build. The official beta 1 build was build 1525, and the official beta 2 build, specifically build 1546, dropped the Memphis codename. The official beta 3 release was build 1650.8, and there were some release candidate builds too. There was also a press thingy that you may know for a well-known blue screen that happened during a plug-and-play demonstration. I'm not going to show that clip, but it's out there. It's pretty easy to find. Windows 98 was released to manufacturing on the 15th of May 1998 and then to retail on the 25th of June in the same year. The press gave a generally positive viewpoint of the OS, though it was also pointed out that it wasn't too much more stable compared to Windows 95, the OS that it was meant to replace. Anyway, support for Windows 98, at least officially, would end on July 11th, 2006, alongside that of Windows Me. Anyway, I'm going to be using physical hardware like normal because uh, this operating system in particular is uh, quite finicky with virtual machine software anyway. Anyway, the computer of choice is a Dell Dimension 2100, which has an Intel Celeron that is socket 370, 256 megabytes of RAM, and a, uh, a hard disk drive. This PC has integrated graphics, but it does have a dedicated sound card, a Creative Blaster Audio PCI 64, which uh, would have originally been, and it's one of those OEM cards. So, yeah. Anyway, I think it's time that we should finally get started because, well, yeah. Now we're at the desktop. First, I want to change the wallpaper here because I'm going to need to change it for later on in the video where I'm going to need to change the color settings. And there you go. So that's the desktop customization control panel option. And I'm also going to show you the system properties here. For a frame of mind, I'm using Windows 90 at a C because that is the more up to date version. So, well, yeah. So let's start with the calculator. I'm not going to explain this too much because it's a calculator, uh, so, well, yeah. We can do different mathematic operations, we can also use a scientific mode to do stuff like binary or hexadecimal, so, well, yeah. It's a pretty simple thing, most operating systems come with one, even desktop environments pretty often come with one, so, well, yeah. Next up, we have MS Paint, which is a quite well-known program. You probably used it at one point, which is why I'm covering it. Inside MS Paint, we've got brush, eraser, line, undo, redo, bucket, different colors, and spray can. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It didn't really change much compared to how it was in 95, and it remained fairly similar all the way up until Windows 7 when the interface got a big overhaul. So, well, yeah. Anyway, what I wanted to draw this time was a waterfall because I previously went to one about almost a year ago by this point and I previously talked about drawing a waterfall in a previous video. So here you go. Anyway, I've mostly finished up this entire masterpiece that uh, didn't really take me too long to make 
So I'm going to save this, and that should basically be MS Paint. Next up, we have ScanDisk, which is a error checking or disk checking utility. I don't know why I decided to cover this, but well, here we are anyway. I want to cover at least one of the system tools here, so that's why I'm covering it. Anyways, the options we have here are we can select the different drives, we can choose a type of test, specifically standard or thorough, and we can select if we want to automatically fix errors or not. It's fairly simple, but there's also an advanced option, so we can generally get a bunch of more options. Furthermore, in my Windows 95 video, I mentioned if you didn't shut the computer down properly and booted it up, scanners would show up. Well, guess what? Just like in Windows 95, that carried over to Windows 98. So, well, yeah. Anyway, that's ScanDisk, so let's move on to Outlook Express. Anyway, Outlook Express is a fairly simple thing. It's the Outlook... It's Microsoft Outlook, except with only email. And it's normally the default uh, email viewer. But, well, yeah, I have my own one here. It's called the actual Microsoft Outlook. So, well, yeah. We have this uh, sample email that, or this welcome email that shows up. And which is good because I don't want to actually uh, associate an email with this copy of Windows 98. So, well, yeah. Anyway, I'm immediately moving on to Microsoft Word because, well, I want to cover a few non-pre-installed programs for once. So, well, yeah. I'm not going to cover this too much because I already made a video which goes into more depth about Microsoft Word 97. So, well, yeah. But anyway, this is a word processing program, and as such, you can make stories and whatnot in it. Uh, there's also Notepad, and there's also the built-in WordPad, but I'm not going to really cover those, so, uh, yeah. Moving on, we have My Computer, which is a uh, integration of Windows Explorer that is designed specifically only to show system files and whatnot. I'm using it here so I can get access to the system sounds directly and other sample media that is included in the Windows directory. I was going to do a mini demonstration, However, I'm unsure of the copyright status of Passport.mid, and I don't want to end up getting copyright from playing it in Winamp. Unfortunately, that's how things go, but what I can do, or what I am going to do, is I am going to show you the uh, startup sound, which I wanted to show earlier in this, uh, which is why there was that abrupt cut, but that just, but well, yeah. So I'm going to do that in Windows Media Player. Now I will note that there is a bit of a change with Windows Media Player compared to how it was in Windows 95, notably that it's quite more early of modern Windows Media Player. Kind of the general what came to what's now what we ended up with more recently with XP and Windows 7, so well yeah. But anyway, here you go, here's the Windows 98 startup sound that I was going to do earlier in the video. I want to cover Netscape Navigator next because it was a popular web browser for the time. I'm not going to cover this too much because I don't really have any websites that will necessarily work on this browser, uh, at least not yet, because I do plan on continuing to make more videos on Netscape Navigator and some of the different versions of it in the future, but well, yeah. So this is Netscape Navigator 3, it's pretty simple, and well, yeah. Next, I want to cover gaming because this is uh, something that is interesting because Windows 98 and 95 and kind of Millennium Edition as well can run specific games that may not work on newer versions of Windows as in anything based off of the NT kernel. So well yeah. The first game that I'm going to really properly delve into is Age of Empires, a Microsoft game from 1997. Uh, this game is quite popular these days so I'm going to cover it it runs pretty fine, honestly. I'm doing the campaign that is more of like a tutorial here because it's generally easy and, well, yeah. But as you can generally tell, this game doesn't require too much resources and it's quite fun and it's quite easy to run and it still works on even newer versions of Windows like Windows XP, for example, so, well, yeah. Next up, I want to cover Need for Speed 2 SE. I remember seeing this game on in an LGR video a bit back, uh, so yeah, I, I I like this game quite a bit, and just like the other game, or just like the previous game, this also runs quite well. I'm kind of surprised for this because of the fact that we're not using a graphics card, 
This is running off of integrated graphics, if you remember what I said it, at the start of the video when I went over the specs of the system. So, well, yeah. Also, uh, what well, you're seeing may be a little blurry, however, because of the fact that the camera probably was too overwhelmed with the, all the things to focus on, and I don't want a capture card because that kind of ruins a bit of the more charm to my content. So, well, yeah. Uh, I apologize, but I will say this. I did set a new record on this game for once, so, well, yay. So, well, yeah, that's Need for Speed 2 SE. The next game that I'm gonna cover is Sonic CD. Yes, they made a port of Sonic CD for the PC back in 1996. Uh, if you don't believe it, go look it up. They actually did that. But anyway, uh, Sonic CD is a fairly simple game. I've played a few of the old Sonic games before. I have a uh, Sonic 2 on my 3DS, uh, the 3D version of the game, specifically. So, well, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go past Palm Tree Panics on here, because, well, I don't want to get too far into this game, because people say this is one of the best Sonic games out there, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone that hasn't played it yet. So, well, uh, yeah, uh, I have... I'm surprisingly good at this, I managed to make it past the first two parts of Palm Tree Panic. So, well, yeah. That's Sonic CD, and that's the only game that I need to uh, change the color settings to 256 color mode with. Yeah, you need those at specific settings. Well, well, yeah. Last but not least, I want to play SimCity. I've played SimCity games before. Uh, specifically, I've played SimCity Build It on mobile. It always crashes a lot, making for a pretty miserable experience. This is also why you don't play SimCity Build It, because most uh, devices will start to run into problems after a given time period. Well, anyway, here's a better SimCity game, which is SimCity 3000. I didn't exactly know how to do a city until I realized that I needed a specific power plant or something that I didn't already have. But well, yeah, it's a quite a pleasant game, and it's probably something that would probably be nice to look at for a period of time, especially given that this is the updated version of Windows 98 that didn't have the same bug that Windows 95 had, uh, you know, the 49.7 day one. Uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, I do want to bring something up here. When this game closes, it wants to reopen again, and I have to do an alt tab to go control alt delete and then close the game manually. It's a bit of a hard process, but well, yeah. I have a behind the scenes video showing how this generally works. If you're interested in some other things that happened while I was recording this. So, well, yeah. That's basically gonna wrap it up for games. I do want to bring up a few honorable mentions I was considering playing but didn't. Those being Half-Life, Final Fantasy VII, the original Grand Theft Auto, and I want to bring up that you can play DOS games, although I don't really have any DOS games on standby for me to readily use. Although, the original Grand Theft Auto does have a DOS version. So there is that. And, uh, yeah. That is basically almost all I want to do. But to generally give you a summary, I did some stuff. I did some calculations. I drew a picture. I typed some stuff in Microsoft Word. I listened to the Windows 98 startup sound. I checked out Netscape Navigator. And I played a few games, and it was quite fun. I also got to get a lot of B-roll footage while editing this video. And it is taking quite a bit of a toll on me. So, well, yeah. Now, if you want to do this for yourself, one, maybe don't try to go as overkill of an approach that I did. Two, you may want to try to consider getting a system and try this out yourself. It's quite fun, and you can actually find a bit of software that is more modern that works on this. You don't have to go for the software of the time. Uh, you can use, like, Firefox 3, and uh, there's even some antiviruses, even if they're not the greatest, that still support Windows 98. And then uh, you can extend the uh, amount of programs that you can use and use newer programs using something called Kernel X. It's really cool. I want to make me make a video on it sometime, but not in the time right now. Uh, so, well, yeah. You can try to daily drive this operating system in the modern day. It may be a bit difficult. The web may not be as accessible, but there is a search engine designed for old systems. I'm generally giving a bit of ideas if you want to do this, so well, yeah. Alright, I think it's finally time that I uh, just uh, finish this off. So well, yeah. Without further ado, thanks for watching. I will see you next week. Bye.